This is a story about gear. Well, to be more specific, this is a rant about me and my relationship with gear. You guys have had a front row seat and watched as I've trampled through the desert and roamed through the forest with these toys, and you've gotten to see some of the stories I've told. Well, here's a quick look at what I have and how I use it, and at the end you'll get my thoughts on how I really feel about it. So hey guys, here's an interesting fact. 97% of the people that subscribe to me are men. 35 to 70 years old. That's nuts. YouTube, when you check your analytics, they tell you everything. Um, you know, nothing too personal, but it tells me which videos you guys like the most, when you guys dip off the video, and I'm just baffled. I mean, I'm, I'm absolutely baffled how much people love gear. You guys love talking about gear. It also shows me that you guys watch stuff like, uh, you know, all the gear guys, Fro Nose Photo and Chelsea and her husband, I can't remember his name. And then you guys leave them and you come watch some of my videos. That's what it's telling me at least. And I get it because I think what's going on is you guys are me. I look at the videos I watch, I look at what I subscribe to, and it's the same stuff you guys are watching. Now listen, before I go talking about gear, I wanna say something, and I want you to hear this clearly. I am not a gear nerd. I love gear uh, enough to say that I've got some decent equipment, but I never want, I never want my channel, I never want uh, anybody that knows me to think that it's all about the gear. To me, it is about the experience. I spent many years uh, with very inexpensive equipment and I enjoyed it. I got good shots. Uh, I had a good time out in, in nature. I don't know what hit me. I don't know what bug hit me, but eventually I felt like I needed a little more and I had to get a little more. I got the means to get a little more. We all do it, right? It's toys. It's boys and their toys. You wanna know who the real star of the Bayou Josh YouTube channel is? This stupid thing right here. Every video I post with this in the thumbnail gets more views. <laughs> I mean, it's like, it's like you guys are a magnet for gear. You love it. Uh, that being said, I'm gonna talk a little bit about gear today. I'm not gonna break down in detail anything. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just simply sum up some of the gear that I have. It's gonna be kind of like a what's in my bag thing, but I can't fit this in a bag, so it's a what do I use video. I don't get a lot of questions on YouTube, but when I do, it's about gear. It's like 90% of the time about gear. You know, what camera, what settings, what, what are you using to film on? It just blows me away. So, without further ado, Let's get into it. Let's talk about the stuff that I use. All right, we'll talk about the cameras first. That's the, that's the bread and butter, right? What makes the images? Uh, I subscribe to a very simple philosophy when it comes to this stuff. Uh, number one, only buy what I can afford and I barely uh, can afford any of the stuff that I have right now. I'm just an average guy. I'm not a pro. I've got a, uh, an, an average man's working income, just prioritized a lot of my play money to buy stuff like this. But if I can get 90% of the performance for about 50, you know, 40, 50% of the cost, that's the route I'm gonna take. So Z6, Z6 II, I film right now on a Z6. Uh, the main body that runs this old dog right here is a Z6 II. And I love it, I love it. It's only 24 megapixels and people talk about the autofocus not being great. Uh, I can show you all kinds of images. I get good images out of it. It's about 90% of what a $6,000 camera is or a $7,000 camera. I've had, you know, the big body D4Ss and stuff like that. I've used the newer 600 millimeters. Um, and I can go look back through all of my pictures and I, if, if I don't see the name on, the image of what took the picture, 
most of the times I don't know. With one exception, the Nikon D850 has incredible image quality. I just couldn't stand it for video. And I wasn't selling pictures, I was putting pictures on Instagram, and I thought to myself, what's the deal with having a $3,500 camera that struggles at doing video? I've got a YouTube channel now. I like making pretty videos about being out in the desert and being out in the mountains. This thing does way better at video than that D850 ever did. I fumbled around with that thing like crazy. I'll link a video uh, why I switched from DSLR to mirrorless, but it all came down to one thing and that's video. So thumbs up, thumbs down on mirrorless uh, Z6 II. Hey, big thumbs up because 90% of the stuff I do is video and it is flawless at taking video. Now here's some downsides. I've shot things like the Sony A1, I've shot the Canon R5. <laughs> Their autofocus is sick. It's some weird robot stuff. I don't get it. Um, but you don't miss what you don't have. I don't know, is that the way it works? We don't talk about these things enough. Tripods. So, um, they're important, okay? They're extremely important. If you've got a cheap tripod, good for you because cheap tripods usually give you about 90% of the performance for, you know, 50, 40, 30, in this case, 10% of the price. I use a Benro Mach 3. Uh, I go aluminum, I don't go carbon fiber. The weight difference between the aluminum and the carbon fiber was like half a pound. Uh, that's like, uh, I don't know, three rolls of toilet paper. I don't know what else to compare it to. It's not much as far as the gimbal's concerned. Wimberly, I mean, there really is no better product than Wimberly. I didn't try anything else, so I don't know that to be a fact. Um, I just had this feeling, I had this feeling. Look, bottom line, it's great. I've never been dissatisfied with it. And uh, I've got the Wimberly uh, side mount one instead of the, the one that swings up and down. I don't know what you call that one. Uh, look, all of this stuff is gonna be in the description. You could actually click on one of my affiliate links and you could go buy it and I'll make a little money. I mean, I'm not gonna get rich, but you know, it's a great way to support a up and coming YouTuber. Yeah, up and coming. Ooh. Wimberly, Benro, good stuff. I was just talking about how much I love my tripod and I realized the, the screw was coming out. What, so I gotta get my tools out and I keep my tools in my trusty camera bag. So I didn't realize how big of a deal camera bags were until I got a decent one. Uh, I don't think I ever spent more than $75, maybe a hundred. I've never spent a hundred dollars on a camera bag. Uh, F-stop is the bomb. I'm just gonna tell you all the hype about it. Every video you watch is for real, real deal. This is a fantastic bag. Imagine going to REI or any of the upscale camping places finding the absolute best bag they have and put a camera organization system in it. Uh, <laughs> it is fantastic. Uh, the way I use mine is pretty simple. I'm a big fan of, uh, of these, you know, these clamps. I hang stuff all over it. I've got extra clamps if I need it. Uh, bags inside of that, sorry, pockets inside of pockets. So if I need a quick place to slide stuff that I forgot to put back when I close the main compartment, uh, plenty of pockets on the outside. Uh, on this outside one right here, waterproof zipper. Um, what do I keep in here? I've got my rain jacket in here, matches my bag. Uh, tons of straps everywhere. So if you want to carry your tripod on the back, you can do it right there. Um, you know, of course the straps on the bottom as well. Hard, like almost feels like a Kevlar material on the bottom or some kind of waterproof um, that's what it feels like. It feels like a waterproof bag. If you've had those watertight, um, durable bags, this is exactly what that feels like. So incredibly durable. Uh, the inside, um, very well padded, uh, compartment area. Uh, hopefully nothing falls out. Nope, nothing will fall out. You know, I organized it pretty much exactly like they sent it. I put my shooting camera right there, the Z6. 
Um, lenses, I only carry one extra lens with me other than the big boy. KNF does the um, variable ND filters. And I'm gonna put a link to this. I'm gonna put a link to everything, but this is one of my favorite little tools. I bought a more expensive one and I just couldn't tell where the, the stops were, right? This one's got a stopper here and a stopper here for minimum and maximum. This one was under $100, way better than anything I've used so far. I don't have to go in and do all kinds of crazy color correction. And if you guys are photographers, you know filters are a big deal in landscape, but in videography, it's even more important because uh, you know, the, the exposure is always changing. Instead of stopping the camera down, you can just, um, you know, darken up your lens, which is fantastic. Love these things. KNF, uh, one of the best inexpensive little tools that I have in my bag. We can't talk about gear without talking about the drone. This one piece of gear has changed my entire outlook on videography. If I had to give up that big 600 millimeter lens and was forced to continue to do YouTube, I couldn't do it without the drone. The drone adds to the story in such a way that cannot be quantified. It helps tell the story. It shows the entire scene from a 400 foot level. Now, a word of caution, I'm on my second drone. My first drone was the DJI Mini 2 excellent little drone, 4K video. The problem is when you import the video and you put it up next to the Z6, it just doesn't stand up. So I upgraded to the DJI Air 2S. The Air 2S has a one inch sensor, shoots in 4K and 5.4K, and the image quality is fantastic. So drones, worth their weight in gold, tell the story better than any piece of equipment I have, and I just don't know if I can see myself ever again being without a drone. This is the most important thing that I can say. Don't get discouraged about gear. We are in a society right now where everybody shares their best stuff on Instagram and on YouTube and on the apps. They spend countless hours editing uh, pictures and videos, and I've been caught up in that comparison trap where I look at what other people have done and it kind of steals away my joy if my stuff's not as good. That led me down a path of, you know, trying to upgrade gear and never really feeling satisfied by what I had. I had to, I had to break that cycle. I had to say to myself that um, it's not about the gear, it's about the experience. Now, if anybody tells you that gear doesn't matter, that's a lie. The more money you spend on gear, you get better stuff. It's just a fact, okay guys? But there is a point of diminishing returns and you can get fantastic images out of um, some pretty marginal gear. And I'm proof that you can get some really crappy images out of fantastic gear. Uh, so the bottom line is do not let anything steal away the joy that comes from just being outside and experiencing this wonderful world. I appreciate you and there's more coming guys, there's more coming and I know I've been doing a lot of those uh, storytelling uh, narrated videos. I enjoy them. I, you know, I like making pretty things and I feel like those are a little prettier and I can't stand looking at myself talking to a camera. That's really what it comes down to guys. I don't know if I can tolerate myself that much and what I'm afraid of is one day you're not going to be able to tolerate this craziness talking back into the camera. But that being said, I've rambled on long enough. Thank you for watching. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. What else do people say? Click on one of the links. I don't know. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you and we'll see you on the next one.